Take your success to the next level. Become a member of the Best Seller Portal, the ultimate platform for achievers like you. Join Best Seller Portal now in three easy steps. Step one, type www.bestsellerportal.org in your browser. Step two, click membership and fill in your details. Step three, submit and welcome to a world of success. Welcome to the Best Seller Portal family. Your success journey starts here. Be the best version of yourself with the support of the best. Visit now and thrive at www.bestsellerportal.org. Welcome to another broadcast of the Competitive Edge. Today we're going to be looking at a pretty interesting topic, and today we are looking at personal brand versus corporate brand. So if you are a rising star in business, I do encourage you to settle in and uh, listen to the information. The possibility exists that you're going to get some nugget that can really transform the way you do business. Along with this, if you know of anyone who's in business, I want to encourage you to call that friend and tell that friend that the competitive edge is on. And uh, remember also to like, subscribe, and share across the various social media platform. Now, today to join me in this conversation, I have two dynamic personality. I have Paul Whitehouse and Paul Whitehouse, he is an expert in working with businesses to help them to access capital, um, growth capital and various type of financial instruments to move their businesses and um, forward. So of course, he will be talking to us today about personal and corporate branding from his financial and um, portfolios. Along with that, I have Peter Scott in studio and Peter Scott he is the brain behind um, Legacy Chronicle, and he's also instrumental in developing and crafting um, life's master plan. So, of course, he will also talk to us today about personal and corporate branding from the perspective of the brands that he represents. But just before we get into today's program, I want to point out a few things as it relates to corporate and personal branding. What our research is showing is that millions of global businesses do not have a personal brand. And I'll, I'll get into this today to really help you to understand the importance of personal branding. The research is also showing that millions of global businesses that think they have a strong corporate brand, they rather have weak and um, corporate brand. Millions of corporate brands do not have what we call a strong corporate personality. Why? Because it has pure, poor um, elements. All right, what makes a corporate brand a pr corporate brand? What makes a personal brand a personal brand. To add some more perspective to the conversation, I want to also say this, that personal brands account for over 50% of your sale. Now, if you're challenging this, I want you to think about this. One of the things that businesses need is visibility. And what helps do any business with visibility is the personality that is driving the visibility of that organization. Just think about this. You, the average person, versus Michael Jordan. Or you, the average person, versus a celebrity personality. That celebrity personality um, is already established. That celebrity personality also would have established, you know, confidence, trust, and credibility. 
And that's what you call personal brand. They have built their personal brand. So if you were to bring that individual or those individuals into your business domain and say, hey, endorse this brand, what happens? They're going to significantly increase the visibility of your operation, which will ultimately lead to massive amount of cash flow and optimization. Uh, personal brands um, also accelerate the know, the like, and the trust. And many rising stars in business, you struggle to break through the ceiling, the ceiling of being known. And if you're not known, you're not given the public enough reason to want to like you. And if the public don't have enough reason to like you, the public don't have enough motive to trust you. So you will remain stagnant in just this startup phase. And the startup phase can prolong for you know, days, weeks, months, and years, and you're stuck here. So you're not able to significantly increase the business cash flow because one, you're not deploying effective personal branding, and two, you have a weak corporate brand. In today's program, we was going to give you high level overviews because the time would not permit us to go do that deep dive to really unlock all of the facts, but I will do my best to at least leave enough information that really helps you moving forward to understand the importance of personal branding and corporate branding and how they can work together to optimize your business potential to cash flow. Having said that, I want to come to Paul and Paul, I know that you are the expert with finance. And ever so often on this platform, I hear you say that you are approved. And I'm aware that you're not saying that because you simply want to say it. You're saying it because you mean it. Can you talk to us about a little bit about what inspired you, first of all, to get into the financial market space to help um, to possibly help millions of businesses and um, to achieve their financial objective. Can you talk to us about what inspired you? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Gary. Uh, glad to be here with you and Peter all the time. And I guess what inspired me was, I don't know if it was one single thing. Um, I worked regular jobs throughout the 1990s, and my friend Nasser, he would be one inspiration, absolutely. His dad owned con convenience stores, and out of high school, his dad set him up with a dump truck and a backhoe, and then Nasser made it happen. He just he just made it happen, okay? So, you know, for years, he wanted me to go and get into business. He was telling me this, but I'm working a regular job. And then late night infomercials before the internet, Carlton Sheets. If you don't know who he is, Google him, Carlton Sheets. Original no money down real estate guy. How do you buy houses and flip them or hold them? And I saw the infomercials and there was dollar signs. I mean, that's what inspires a lot of us is we want to make more money for our families. So that was, I guess that would be the first inspiration. I want to make more money than I make now and have a better life and be able to do more things and help more people. Um, so Carlton Sheets, boom, that took me down the information highway. Uh, I did buy and flip a couple of houses and the stuff worked. So that was definitely an inspiration. And then I think sometimes what well, inspiration for me was at a regular job I wanted to work. And then all of a sudden, you get patted on the back and you told you're the next full-time guy. And then the chief hires his friend. Then nine <laughs> months later, he says the same thing, hires his friend. Then nine months later, does the same thing and hires somebody with six months experience because they had certain quote. They were uh, a, a box that needed checked. I'm sorry. That hits the way of the world. I'm just going to tell you the truth. There was a box that needed to be checked and she fit and I didn't. I had eight years. She had six months. And that happened, and I said, I'm not going to wait around for this. I'm going to listen to Nasser. And 
And I did. I quit a regular job. Everybody was shocked. Why are you quitting a government job? What about your health benefits? What about, what about, what about? No, I'm going to get rich, right? That was my personal inspiration. And then from there up until February 2020, when we started Patriot Business Finance Consultants, everything that I did from then until there built me up to where I'm capable to do right now. That would be, I guess, my inspiration and, and path. All right. Well, I I must say I love that story. I'm going to come right back to you shortly and we're going to expand on on that storyline. All right. Um, I want to talk to Peter now. Um, Peter, I've been working with you for quite some time now, and it's it's well over five, six, seven years. <laughs> it's quite some time. And I know that you're very passionate about people. I can recall very often we are having these passionate conversation about how we're going to inspire and empower people um, to, you know, become the, you know, the richness of their potential. And um, I know that you are now one of the brain behind um, Legacy Chronicle, one of the brain behind Personal Life Master Planning. Um, can you tell us about what are some of your inspiration to really get into the people business? I call it the people business uh, because your brand, your personal and your corporate brand, right. it's all about helping people to become the best version of themselves and to live the best quality life now. Can you talk to us about what your inspirational pathway was like to get into this field? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Gary. Gary, <clears throat> and we're so appreciative of uh, all the listeners, individuals who come to, you know, get a bit of information and even inspiration from the competitive edge. Um, the inspiration that really drove me in direction, I think I can sum it up. I think I'll, uh, it, it's best summed up in a song, one of my favorite songs from the 70s. It says, what's the matter with the world has the world gone mad and then the writer comes to a conclusion um lou rawls and he said nothing is wrong with the world it's just the people that's in it and uh, you know we look at life um, there was one point when i told myself that i wasn't going to have any children because the world is too um there's a problem with the world, so I can't bring more children uh, to go through this. But then I realized as a human being, we have a responsibility uh, to life around us. We have a responsibility to our fellow human beings. And well, uh, we can complain, you know, we can complain and complain. And I was one of those persons who was you know, finding fault with everything that was going on until, you know, the uh i i i receive a, a a very push from from within from from the creator from the lord i was praying actually about it complaining to the lord about all the crazy that is happening in the world and he said ah, why are you complaining about it what are you going to do about it and so you know that's my passion behind uh, every individual that i come across how can we synergize how can we uh, look at making our environment, our world. We may not be able to, you know, change the grand, big world out there, but at least our world that we are living living in, our network. And it is out of that, um, you know, where the Legacy Chronicles program was born. And uh, because we look at, okay, let's look at individuals to understand themselves, to understand, to figure ourselves out. Because what I do realize is that when we figure out ourselves, everything around us improves because there's some, it's like doing a light. And once the light is shining, then the darkness disappears and it expands. Hmm. That was profound, and I'm truly um, touched. And I see we have some similarities there. Um, I can recall way back in the days, 
way back in the days. I was probably 15, 16 years old. And I could recall I the way that I was thinking, I was taking on the challenge of the world. I was looking at teenage pregnancies. I was looking at uh, youth and substance abuse. And I was writing about these things. And I was trying to get the whole world to, to listen to my writing. And I can recall, you know, a, a group of academics sat me down and they say, Gary, do you really believe that you can change the world? That hit me. And But I responded. I said, you know, if more of us come together to help heal the world, uh, we can help to heal the world. <laughs> well, my journey from then to now have expanded significantly, but my focus is still un humanitarian. And it's what we can do collectively right. to, so, you know, drop that little pebble to help make the world a better place. And that definitely is part of my personal brand that I'm, you know, every day I do my best to incorporate that as part, part of the, the, the corporate brand. I want to say a couple of things here on personal branding. And because of the fact that it can do so much to move a business forward, and so much is yet not done to help businesses to leverage this unique tool that can have that transformational effect on businesses. I do believe that there is a need for a school. A school of personal branding is absolutely necessary um, in today's world. Um, it is long overdue. And I just want to give you a hint. Uh, what we have do, done, we have developed uh, this book that we call Master the Sales Communication Process. What this book does, it goes deep into the belly of what is personal branding. It goes deep into the belly of what is corporate branding. And it really helps you to understand the importance of these tools, how to adopt it, how to apply it, and how to set the stage to advance um, the growth of your um, operation. And I want to say for us, it has been working tremendously. In, an, in the near future, I'll talk more about it. We have been using personal branding and corporate branding to build relationships with some of the biggest institutions in the world, not just in a country, in the world. All right, so very soon I'm going to you know, start to advertise that some more and to show what personal branding um, can do. I want to put a face, uh, you know, to personal branding also, just to help our audience to understand what it is. Um, smart ways to, to master uh, the influencer model. In other words, I'm saying you need to take the time to understand all of the smart ways to master influencer model. You see, as you develop your personal brand, you must see yourself as an influencer, all right? Um, seeing yourself as an influencer, doing whatever it takes to become that influencer is going to really help that business to move forward. In the book, Master the Sales Communication, we talk about four types of influencers. We talk about the humorous and storyteller influencer model, and they, it gives you a blueprint as to how to interpret the role of a humorous influ storyteller influencer. And it's a beautiful program. Now, not everybody is going to be humorous, all right? Sometimes I would say to my colleague that I don't think I'm a funny guy. <laughs> I don't think I can make people laugh. And then they would say to me, what? I believe you got it. Well, I don't see it. But we also have the educational storyteller influencer. So if you don't think that you are that humorous storyteller influencer, you could be an educational storyteller influencer. And I think that I fall into that category because I talk business all the time, right? Um, but it's nice if you can combine the two. Why? Because it is the ability to tell a story, all right? that really helps people to connect with you and buy into you, all right? So it's an art. And um, when you find celebrity comes out and they talk, you know, they're good at telling story, they have history of story and 
those are some of the things that you can actually relate to. So the last skill set here that I'm going to talk about here is what we call the inspirational uh, storyteller influencer. So you see you have three categories here. And as you build your personal brand up, you want to at least adopt one, if not more. At least you want to be a genius at applying one of these influencer models as you build up your personal brand. Why? I said it early on. Personal branding accounts for over 50% of your sales effort. So let's think about this. If your business is doing well, just think about how much more your business can do by incorporating personal branding into your organization. It is because of personal branding, the general public can now identify with the brand, identify with the personality in it that represents the brand. And that breaks down the know, the like, and the trust, and they wanna do more business with you. I want to come now to Paul, and I want Paul to tell us why should the public, what is it that you want the public to know about you as a financial expert, why they should like you, and why they should trust you? All to you, Paul, financial instrument. Okay, that sounds easy. <laughs> well, I really like what you said, and I so agree with that. Uh, you have to be your own influencer. You have to be the yeah. person that people want to work with. And uh, I, I, I didn't realize I did it. I kind of realized I did it that way, but you just really made me think about it again. I combined the humorous and the informative and the educational, and, and it works because, and, and it's not fake. It's just, it's not. It's just what happens. It's how personality, I suppose. Well, I'm happy that you said that. I'll talk about, you know, fake influencers as now. I love that. But all to you. Okay. Well, a, a Patriot Business Finance Consultants, why would somebody even want to begin working with us? I'm going to say over the years, eight or nine times, there's been people who've called me. And I always ask, you know, why would you call me? How would you get a hold of me? And they say, I saw a video you did. Or I was referred to you. Most of the time, it's I was referred to you. But I really enjoy it. And this just happened uh, twice in the last week. Uh, I saw a video you did a few years ago. Wow, perfect. I'm glad I did that video. It must have, it worked. I got a, I got an opportunity out of it. So in the videos, I here's how I do it. And I'm sure I really think this is how people should do it. You got to certainly be yourself. And you can learn a new skill and be yourself. If you're not the storyteller, if you're not, and Gary, you are pretty funny. You're very humorous, just so you know. Don't don't discount that, right, Peter? <laughs> All right. Um, just gonna be yourself, and then adopt those new skills. Like just become who you are. If if you are not, if you you know, if you got really got to work to be funny, I guess, and you're more informative and you can lay the plan out like an expert, people are going to recognize that. If you're not funny and you're not telling stories, but they can look at you from what the words that you speak on the video or an interview, and they can tell genuine, concerned, caring, informative. He's got the, he's got the solution to my problem, which that's the most important thing. If somebody's going to work with you, you have to have the solution to their problem Otherwise, you can be as funny as you want, and it just doesn't matter, and tell as many stories as you want, and it doesn't matter. But uh, why do they want to work with us? I think when they see a video of me, they think I'm friendly, I'm informative, and capable, and sincere, and I do want to get it done. And I even tell people why I want to get it done, so that we can all make money together. I need to make some money to support the kids and buy them new shoes and whatever, right? I got to, you know, feed the family and support life. Everybody knows when you're doing business with somebody, they're also going to make some money. So that's fair. It's that's, that's just letting everything that's on the table. Hey, we're all in this together. And the problem that you have, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to solve it in the best way that it can be solved. 
And uh, here's why I'm doing this. I'm doing it because if you're going to do something for somebody, you got to do it at 100%. You simply have to. And if you want a chance to work with that person again, then you have to do it. You have to get it accomplished and you have to make it happen in the best possible end result. I mean, there's so much to talk about, but as far as the personal brand of Patriot, and really, I don't focus enough on it, but I'm going to based on what we talk about a lot here. We built our business without much advertising. We did it with personality and referrals, referral fees. Everybody in the world, 10% of what we profit, bring us a deal. We put it on paper. We pay you. That's how we built our business. And I know that I did it with personal branding. I knew that I had to do that. But if I, as you said earlier, if I put 100% more focus on it, how much better can my business be? Great. Great. All right. Thanks for that share, um, Paul. Um, Paul, <laughs> I've worked with you on a, a few platforms. And, you know, uh, I think what uh, drawn me to to your brand is how much you pour into people. Uh, I, I would hear you articulating yourself about the brand and what the brand can do for people. And, you know, you had that young lady next to you who you were mentoring and you were coaching. And then, you know, when you hear her talk, she, you know, she was a giant to work with. And I said, man, this guy's really, you know, dropping gems. He's really sowing seeds. Um, into people's lives to inspire and empower them and um, to be, you know, the best version of themselves. And um, so I said, we have to connect. And, you know, because of your strong personal brand. <laughs> that, that means a lot to me. Yeah, that's very You're nice. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. That that hit me. You're welcome, You're welcome. my friend. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, um, you know, I we have history, my brother. You know, I, I know we are driving down the streets of New York. We are, you know, we are moving along the streets of New York and we are always talking about some transformational concept for the people. Um, what is it that you want? Um, how do you want to be your brand um, to be known and um, to be liked and to be trusted? What is it about your brand that is there to touch and transform people's life. What do you want people to know? Talk to us a little bit about your brand. Well, it, it's it's actually in our name, um, Legacy Chronicles, um, because we, and we take you. You mentioned the the um, whether to use the humor humor approach or the educational approach. Um, I, I'm not good at making jokes. If if we're having if we're having an entertaining session, we all can cheer. But to, to make a joke, um, I, I will say the same joke and it doesn't turn out the way how I want it to. <laughs> so I, I go the, the educational approach and that is because also I've had uh, many years in the classroom uh, over the years. Um, and so I talk to people about their favorite subject. I because I, I discover the best way to get an individual to open up is really to be the interviewer. And so that is the approach that we get individuals to talk about themselves. And that is what legacy is all about. Um, what do they want to do? How do they want to be remembered? And we interview individuals. Everything that we do is to zero in on the person and to help them to discover their brand as an individual. And once we get there, you find that, you know, the, the, the walls just go down, you know, just by communicating with, and when individuals understand that the questions that you're being, uh, you know, forwarded to them, that is, it, it's about them, questions that nobody has asked them in a long time how their perspective on life what they want to accomplish where they are coming from and when you begin to you know tap into individuals like that they zero in and they're willing to talk because people have so much bottled inside that they are so busy going about life doing what they do that they don't take the time to really concentrate on themselves and what is happening deep down 
And so when we, we, we make that approach, um, it's most times it's like immediate trust. I'm speaking with perfect strangers and just by pitching them on themselves, their dreams, their aspirations, how to make what they're doing better uh, immediately, um, people move from, you know, just the first time I'm meeting them till we're doing business together, you know, so it's always not about me, but it's about what I can, how I can help them to do what they do better. All right. Thanks for that share. Um, Peter, and I know that you're doing a pretty good job and, um, the, legacy chronicle project because i do believe that one of the objective of the legacy chronicle is to help people to have a legacy a legacy that will be there for their children their grandchildren their great grandchildren and one of the unique way i believe that you're doing that is by helping those individuals to write their books, to publish their books, to perhaps one day get to bestseller and to maximize their uh, potential to cash flow from that book. So um, I think your brand in this context um, is set out, setting out to do uh, a good job and really helping people. And uh, so I think that's a representation of who you are, uh, in your personal branding that has crossed over um, to your corporate brand. Now, I want to talk, uh, uh, say a little bit more about personal branding. What exactly is personal branding? Again, today I'm doing high level overview. I'm not going to go deep into this. And if you want more of this information, I do encourage you to reach out to us. Along with this, if you need not only to learn about brand, personal branding and corporate branding, but if you need access to capital, um, we have all type of financial instruments um, to help you with. Paul will talk shortly about, about that in terms of what his brand has for you as a rising star in business and what he will do for you to ensure that you get access to capital to move your business, your vision and forward. But let me talk a little bit more about what is a personal brand. Now, your personal brand should reflect you in your authenticity. Um, Paul just spoke about that. When people see you, all right, your personal brand, it must be a true representation of who you are. But of course, in this world, we have all types of people who put on the mask all type of people who masquerade as what they are not. And that could be very deceptive to potential beneficiaries. And we're saying to you that when you're attempting to build a strong brand, you want that brand to represent authenticity, integrity, mm -hmm. trust, all right. And so personal branding represent this. But I want to go a step further. Your personal brand is you in your effort to self-actualize. Because I'm saying this in the sense that while your brand is going to be a reflection of who you are today, that brand, that personal brand could evolve because as you grow and develop as an individual, guess what? Your personal branding is also growing and with you, all right? Because you are, you're incorporating the possibility of self-actualization into what your personal brand is. So I'm saying this to say that you may start here with your personal branding, but you can evolve into other things because personal branding is part of that evolution. <laughs> The third concept that I want to leave here is that your personal brand is your intentional and unintentional influence on people. <laughs> and this is a technical one. Because what happens very often, you know, 
you may have a very strong personality and that may have positive influence on people, but it may also have negative influence on people because very often people may try to narrow you uh, based on where they are at, all right? So these are things that you just need to be aware of. And what you need to be in control of is what you can control. And this is what we call the intentional design of personal branding. And you know that you're gonna have a certain degree of impact because of intention, but that very intention to create a certain impact is gonna have unintended results. Perhaps, you know, if that demographic is not important, you can just ignore it. I'm just helping you to understand what a personal brand represents. It's like saying that Christ didn't please everyone and we can't please everyone. The element of personal brand it also represents that. Some people might say you're too loud, you're too soft, but it's all a part and parcel of personal branding and you have to deal with it. The fourth concept that I wanna um, touch on very um, quickly here is that your personal brand is how you want to be known, liked, and trust. Now, and I use the term want to be known, liked, and trust because of the fact that you have control over it, all right? You have control over the know, like, and trust factor. And the control that you're gonna have over it is by working on you. It's working on the authentic you. It's working on the self-actualized you. And it's about working on presenting the authentic and the self-actualizing you to the public. You have control over it. Now, what happened in most cases, whether you are intentionally designing a brand or unintentionally doing so, you're shaping public opinion, all right? Directly and indirectly. And it makes more sense to be direct and in control in how your demographic interprets who you are. The last concept that I'm gonna leave here is that your personal brand is your public side that you are most comfortable with. <laughs> this is a bit tricky you now because when it comes to personal branding, you have a public side and you have a non-public side. It's your personality, all right? Um, there are things that you may do in private that it has no public, you know, no business being in the public. All right, so the side that really becomes public in most cases is the side that you want the public to know, all right? And there is where the control factors comes into, into play, all right? Um, so I just want to at least lay this ground. I want to be as honest and open on, on, as possible on the concept of personal branding because, Peter, you talk about it all the time. We have many sites, all right? Um, some may want others to know that I'm deeply spiritual, but perhaps the brand that you're dealing with may not have nothing to do with spirituality. That's my personal side, all right? My public side is the fact that I am a subject matter expert in what I do. I live to provide service to humanity. I want to transform people's lives. And all of that may not have necessarily anything to do with my Christian ideology, all right, or my political ideology, all right? So I, I'm, I just want to put this out there because we are fully aware to help people to understand what personal branding really is. Sometimes when you see a, a public figure do not believe that that's 101% of the individual because in many cases, it's not so. And I can go into a whole host of best case and worst case where that is concerned. 
Having said that, I want to come to Paul. And uh, Paul, I know that you provide a number of financial instruments um, to people. So Rising Star in business who want to grow and scale, who want to cash flow optimize, who wants to take their business global. And they're asking themselves, where can I get this capital from? Paul, your corporate brand is the brand that they need to know. So can you talk to us now a little bit about financial instruments that the public can get from you? So if you're in 50 states in the US and you need capital, um, Paul is the person to start you know, talking to. If you are a foreign national that wants to get settled in, into the US, perhaps you can come to me because we're going to set you up with the Secretary of State and get your business license. We're going to walk you through that entire ecosystem, and then we're going to get you funding to move your business and forward. But not to distract from the topic, Paul, can you talk to us about your financial instruments? So, mm -hmm. so listen in public, understand more about your brand and your financial instruments. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, you are approved. It's available for all the business owners out there who have outstanding credit, time in business, and they're making money. They already know they're approved. They know it's available. So why would you work with Patriot Business Finance Consultants and the High Net Worth, Net Worth Investors Guide? Why would you do that? Here's why. We do it better, and I'll prove it to you. And I'm not, I'm not shy when I say that. The banks are only going to put out what they offer. They will never, ever, ever tell you, you know, John, you ought to just go down the road a couple miles, turn left in the XYZ bank because they're cheaper than us. That's what you should do. They're not going to give you that good advice. They're going to tell you what they can offer for you and sign you up. Okay. Well, we're that other place. We have less expensive money. And we're going to get it for you because that is our mission in business to set you up the best. So you want to work with us at least every single dollar that we save you on cost of money goes directly to your bottom line and into your pocket. So that's why you should work with us. Uh, difficult credit. Your bank just can't help you. 680, 660 and below, they're, they're saying, come back in a couple months. That's what they're going to say. What well, here's what we're going to say. You're approved. Here's the cold hard truth. You have a 600 credit score. You're simply going to have to put money down to get this approved. But that's the truth. And I'm sure you want to hear the truth, right? You don't want to hear any fluff. You want to hear the truth. So the truth is it's going to cost more. It's going to be more expensive. You got to put money down. But you're approved. And here's the positive. You get what you need for your business. Your business increases because you have that new equipment because that's why you're buying new equipment. And, and make all the payments on time and your credit score improves and everything gets better down the road. That's how somebody who cares about you works with you. And that is how we work with you. We're not gonna, if, you, if, if it's difficult credit, we're not gonna say, <laughs> see you later. We're going to say, here's how you get it done, and let's get it done with you, for you. So we offer equipment financing. We offer commercial and investment property financing. We offer a couple of products like uh, it's called factoring, which if your cash flow is slow for your business, you got an immediate source of cash, which would be called your accounts receivable. You got 35, you got 60, you got 100 people who all owe you a lot of money because they haven't paid their invoices yet. Well, factoring allows you to get an advance on that invoice, not an advance, your money, because you sell the invoice for a discount. It's a $10,000 invoice. You sell it for $9,800, two points, 2%. Why would I pay 2%? Because you need the money. And this is an established thing that's been around. Factoring has been around for centuries. So we can help you with cash flow. Purchase order financing, if you have a very large order, Walmart ordered 10 million pairs of shoes from you and you want to fill that order, but you can't fill it because you don't have the cash to get the shoes to ship to Walmart. 
We'll set you up with PO financing, which will advance the money for that order to manufacture it, to buy it, to ship it to Walmart. And then everybody gets paid when it gets to the client. A deal that you otherwise could not have done because you didn't have the cash. You wondered, where can I get the cash to fulfill this order? I'm telling you right now, Patriot Business Finance Consultants and the High Net Worth Investors Guide is where you can get the cash. So call us. Don't wait. Okay. Uh, raising capital for solid businesses, solid financials, growth capital. You're tapped out at the bank. The bank won't give you any more. Where do you get the money? Because you don't have the assets to borrow against. There's investor money available out there. And if you're working with anybody who tells you that they can get you investor money, you better ask them, are they licensed? Are they going to do this in compliance with the Securities and Exchange Commission rules, laws, regulations? The answer with us is yes. How do we do that? I'm a scout for two investment bankers who who like us and they've been we've been friends with them for four years. We've been doing deals with them for four years. And all that happened because I pushed a button on LinkedIn to make one connection and that took me down a road. So let that inspire you. Make connections. You don't know where that connection is going to take you. And it can be big. So growth capital for existing businesses, anything industrial hemp fiber you see behind me, that's a 12 ton per hour industrial hemp fiber factory. We're helping clients build these things. Startup businesses, raising capital, raising debt and equity, not just equity. That's a better way to do it. Maximize low cost debt, minimize high cost equity. I think I really encapsulate, well, working capital, sale leasebacks, literally whatever you need. Have a conversation with us and let us lay the plan out for you. And you decide if you agree with it or not. But I think that you will because we're going to put our best effort forward. And we always want to get you the best result. Um, Gary, can I just say one thing on the subject that we were talking about real quickly, please? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. Interactions create and determine the outcome. Positive or negative. However you present yourself, however you brand your business, however you present yourself in conversation, mm -hmm. that's going to determine the outcome. They either want to work with you or don't. They either want to be your friend or not be your friend. You're either going to get that girl that you, you like to fall in love with you or not fall in love with you. Depends on how you interact. That's the cold hard truth, whether you're in business or life. And... As we, you were talking, as both you and Peter were talking, it made me think of something that happened to me on the Clubhouse app the other day. Uh, an incredible reaction, a new client. Okay. I listened to him talk, and this guy was straightforward. Like he was telling, telling a couple people what they didn't want to hear. I thought it was interesting, and he was very smart in business. He's a Chicago, not Chicago City, but there's a suburb. I, I don't forget the name of it. He said it. But a uh, suburb of Chicago, he's a policeman there. So he likes his job, but he also likes business. And he says, my job's a means to an, out, to an end for me so I can make income to support my lifestyle. But he was straightforward about business. So I, I liked him instantly. And then I just told him what I could do for him. And um, the, no, he told me at the end of the conversation. He goes, I'm always skeptical. He goes, people tell you what they can do, but they don't do it. He goes, you laid it all out. You gave me more information than anybody's ever given me for free. And uh, you laid it out in the right way. And and I took that compliment and I liked it, you know. But I'm relating relating that to what you're talking about right now, which is the public, how do you present yourself? I present myself as just, you have to adopt that role. And I was telling, I told you guys that the other, I think yesterday or the day before on the show, I got, a, I have a new uh, consultant and she said it real well. She said, I have to talk about money. She, she already does podcasting, but she said, I have to present myself, talk about money all the time so that when people think about it, they're like, Hey, Barbie's always talking about money. I said, exactly, exactly. Hey, you, you have, you are going to be the money woman. Barbie's got the bucks. Make something up. Make a, a tagline, right? Come to Barbie for the business bucks or something like that. But you want to be that person that people 
when you speak on a subject, you want their ears to pop up. Gary, you you were honestly one of the people on Clubhouse who my ears perked up when I met you. I was like, this guy's got it going on. He's he's on track. There's been several other people there too, but those are like little blips in the radar. You a bunch of outstanding people, then you got a blip right there. I meet a lot of those blips. <laughs> I should call it people, not blips, but you know what I'm talking about. Right? All those nice yeah. and, uh, and he said some real cool things. I always write things down that people say he is a, he was in the Marine Corps, my business partner and best friends Marine. I haven't heard or Bob say this. I think I've heard this saying in a movie before, but this guy said it. He goes, when he was getting out of the Marine Corps, the, his, um, uh, the guy who was doing his paperwork said, we are in the human business and the human business is always booming. So I think that's actually a Marine saying, but we're in the human business, the three of us. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the world is in the human business. Even if you're not in business, you're in the human business because interactions create and determine outcomes. You're talking to people, you're in the human business. And if you're in business, you're absolutely in the human business because you're dealing with people. People who own businesses, you're not dealing with the business because the business can't talk to you. Right. You're right. dealing with the owner and the founder. So relating that, I did, and I'm going to wrap it up right now. What you're saying here on the show, I'm recognizing that that's what happened the other day. I heard him talking. I knew what he did. I wanted to let him know what I did so that I could do business with him because he does real estate. I told him, here's what I can do for you. That conversation, and he told me this, and I respect it. He goes, I got two other people to do this for me. You're going to have to beat them. I said, no problem. All I want is the opportunity to put my offer in front of you and for you to determine if I'm better. And if I am, go with me. He agrees. But it led further. He says, I'm going to open a trucking company. I said, really? Because I also told him about equipment financing. He goes, I was going to pay cash for it, and I was going to pay for the operations of the business out of pocket for three months because i know that i got to wait for payment from invoices i said because I, I told him the wide scope of what i did and then i zeroed in on it i said no you can lease the equipment got you covered you're a startup business i know you told me you've got an 830 credit score but it's still a startup so you need to understand you know expect to put 25 percent down he goes no problem he's got it He's a gold. He's a golden customer. He's got everything I need to get qualified. He's an easy approval. We went further and we talked about accounts receivable finance or financing or factoring, which is selling your invoices to get payment. He, and he says, you mean to tell me I don't have to fund this out of pocket and I can get cash flow? I said, you certainly can. And he knows that because I was willing to speak up and be myself. Who am I? I love Peter says that all the time. Who am I? Well, I know who I am personally, and that does translate into who I am in business. But who am I right now to you, my friend on Clubhouse? I'm the money guy. And here's everything I can do for you. And I'm confident in it. I'm capable. I'm friendly. I'm informative. And I'm funny. Right? <laughs> but I just yeah. talk. That's how I am. I presented myself, and that's how I want every consultant to present themselves. That's how I want the new consultant, Barbie, to present herself, who she is and what she can do. And I think that's how you guys present yourselves. And I think that's how super successful people in business present themselves. Here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's what I can do for you. Let's do it. That's it. That was long. I meant to talk. I didn't mean to take up all the time. But Let's do it. Let's do it. I like that. You spoke just now about, you know, the intelligence of the corporate brand. Uh, it's 101% linked to um, the human factor. And uh, I love that statement. I will expand on it just now uh, because I just want to talk briefly about corporate and branding. So, you know, the, our listening audience get an, uh, an idea. Of course, I'm doing high level overview today. We're not going deeper into it, but at least, you know, you have information to make better decisions. I want to come now to Peter. Um, Peter, can you talk to us about perhaps what is the experience like 
<clears throat> looking at an individual who might be a pastor, a minister, an entrepreneur, and saying to them, you are not properly branded and you're not set to have a legacy. But through my legacy program, we can write your story. We can help you get a brand. We can possibly take you global. Can you talk, walk us through that process so we understand your brand? Well, the, the issue with most individuals um, is that it's definition. Uh, most persons do not understand to define that. And uh, one of the areas that we have to get, get, get to understand um, that they have to define themselves effectively, um, especially individuals who are in the um, startups, individuals who are entrepreneurs. They have not taken the time to do the self analysis to really look at what we call and uh, to find out the seven, because let, let me say something also, Gary, about uh, as we're talking about personal brand and corporate brand, because it goes deep into what we try to get individuals to understand that even though they are a person, but they as an individual is also a corporate individual. So the idea of getting, uh, we what we do, we have the seven matrix of corporate alignment, which that's, that, may, that may sound like something that is applicable to a business, a corporation, a business entity. But then when we, we tap into an individual to get them to understand that they themselves uh, have an individual has nine elements about themselves and we get them to see what those nine elements are, which goes into, you know, they looking into the mirror, they see their body, but beyond what they see are their also their spirit and their soul. And then within the soul, within the soul, there are six components in the soul. And we have a breakdown of individual doing a deep dive within their own self, understanding who they are. Because, and then we get individuals to understand now that you look at yourself from, from to understand that they are a corporate entity then any management of any corporate entity to regulate those pieces requires a plan, a master plan. And they have to really get a bird's eye view of who they really are. Yes, you have a body, you have a spirit, and you have a soul. And the soul is the complex part because for some persons, what we want to understand is do you have a living soul or do you have a dead soul? And the dead soul is an individual who for some reason or another may not understand, may not have a vision, or they are out of alignment with what their purpose is. And when people are out of alignment with what their purpose is, then it tends to go into ways that they do not want, even self-destructive at times, so we get individuals to focus on them being a living soul and a living soul is a person who now has a vision they have uh they have a mission and we then we have the seven matrices so we go down through those seven matrices of their mission and their mandate their message their market their movement which will take them into their money so once an individual comes to us, it's really took for them to have a introspect because it's always going to be, and as we're talking about branding, it is the, it, it, the, the internal brand analysis. What is their internal brand analysis? Because what you're going to do on the outside is reflective of what is going on on the inside. We can't beat that. You can't get further outside than how you or an individual imagine or conceive of themselves on the inside you know so 
individuals we even say to those who are who are listening to us right now you know if you take a look at at, at yourself and to examine who you are and to know yourself you, you got to know yourself branding is about knowing yourself and it is what you how you know yourself that you now can now take that and express it with those who are around you so and then finally we have what we call the seven questions because everything begins and ends with a question so we get individuals to understand the seven 50 question really the 50 question that can transform their lives and uh, by under by writing and answering by individuals writing out the answers to those questions we can take those questions and we can do several things with it number one they're going to get their memoir out of it they're going to get their life story out of it and as we begin to understand you know the highs and the lows the wins and the losses the victories and defeats of their lives then we're able to tap into certain nuggets that is applicable to the market pace place and a course can come out of that because now they have something to teach out of their triumphs and the experiences that they have had and that course can be transcribed into so many other educational digital programs that will empower their marketplace and empower their world so lastly you mentioned a while ago about um, what business are you are are people have to understand what business they are in and we will even look at mcdonald's as you were saying that we will see somebody and we take them for what we see not knowing that there is what we see is just the tip of the iceberg but there's a huge piece of substance beneath that is not seen so if i use even mcdonald's as a business and somebody will ask what kind of a business mcdonald's is in and they say that mcdonald's is into flipping hamburgers but mcdonald's is makes their most of their money out of real estate most of their revenue comes from real estate because they get individuals to uh they purchase individuals may take that the the franchise fee actually cause mcdonald's corporation to eventually own the piece of real estate where the mcdonald's store has started so we have to ask ourselves and we have to ask individuals we try to get individuals to answer the question of what business they are in who do they serve and when we can answer those questions then we begin to now have impact and how we started out about having that dent you know making the world a better place starting with just right where we are with this one person that i will meet which they intentionally will meet with their message and we get the world uh, impact from that direction. Yeah. All right, thanks for that share. And um, Peter, um, love the story of McDonald's and um, you know, what is public knowledge and what is not public knowledge. It works in so many different ways. However, um, as we begin to wrap up today's program, I just want to do a quick overview of a corporate brand. What is a, a corporate brand? I do believe it very often, and there's attempt to build corporate brand, but I think that that attempt and very often is completely messed up. Uh, I will just do a high level overview of um, an interpretation of a corporate brand. Many corporate brands reflect uh, artificial intelligence that has no intelligence. I believe your, your business is a legal identity and it should represent some form of intelligence. Now, let me say this about artificial intelligence. Let's look at ChatGBT. Uh, ChatGBT has intelligence. Your corporate building, in most cases, do not. In other words, what I'm saying, I can go to my computer, I can open up ChatGPT, I can punch in a, a couple of words, and I can it will respond to me. That's an intelligent um, form. When we build in your corporate entity, what intelligent form do you want the building actually to have? 
I'm given a high level overview here. Your corporate building can only portray intelligence through human intelligence, through human intelligence. So we need to at all times recognize the importance of the role that personal branding is playing in crafting the corporate image. Human intelligence and corporate branding is best reflected in the corporate culture. So again, human intelligence in the corporate building is best reflected in the corporate culture. So what message is your corporate culture portraying to the internal workforce? Because the internal workforce will have a clear interpretation of what the corporate brand is. But what is the corporate brand? What message? What, what does the culture communicate to the ideal client? Because the ideal client is shaping an opinion of the organization through your culture. And what is the culture also saying to, to the public? And take into consideration, all of this can only happen through human intelligence. All right, and I think Paul hit on that when he spoke early on. Your corporate culture is 101% designed by human intelligence. Unless you are known, you're adopting modern technology in that process. Now, corporate culture can only be designed and implemented through human intelligence. Just reinforcing what I'm saying here. Your business has a legal identity. Your effort to build a strong corporate brand means you must humanize that corporate entity. And in most cases, when the corporate culture, the corporate entity is not humanized, it becomes less than even artificial intelligence. Strong corporate brands is reflected from strong personal brands that blankets the corporate entity. And I love that statement. Let me go back at it. <laughs> strong corporate brands is reflected from or through strong personal brands that blankets the corporate entities. So your corporate branding is best represented by the strong personalities that you have in the organization and how it is blanketed, consumed and enveloped the organization. This is a high level overview. As time progresses, we're gonna go deeper into this to ensure that the our audience really understand the distinction between corporate branding and personal branding and it's not about personal branding versus corporate branding. It's about how we can marry these two to ensure that you have the best organization possible to help you to achieve um, your business strategic um, objective. So with that being said, again, I really wanna thank each and every one of you guys for being here today. And um, it has been a pleasure. I want to now come to Peter to ask Peter to just give us some of your closing remarks. And um, I think you did an excellent job talking today about a little bit about your personal brand. I know there's so much more to get into about your personal brand and your corporate brand. Um, but I, anyhow, I still want to thank you for the information you would have shared. Can you give us your closing thoughts? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. We, we, we want individuals to understand um, what I call the, the four S's. And if individuals can answer the question of their four S's, it will give them you know, a sense of direction as they are building their personal brand. And your personal brand eventually has certain dimensions to it because your personal brand is gonna take you as you develop your personal brand uh, we talk also about the the four dimensions of mastery 
which is personal, family, uh, community, sure. and corporate, right? Because everybody exists, not just as in a va vacuum by themselves. And what you do, there is a network, a close network of people that are affected and will, and, and will be advanced by, it, which is your family. And then the family is into a collective of what we call a community. And then uh, every community, even the individual, there are structures, corporate structures, legal structures that is used to create agreements by which we all can operate in our, in our community. But the four S's that can be used to help an individual to move for building a personal life master plan into a family life master plan, into their community master plan, and eventually into a corporate setting is we ask what is your substance your substance we don't have the time to go into all of to define we can do it at another time but the four s's is what is your substance what is your systems what is your strategy and what is your structure so systems are structures and strategies and those four elements those four pillars we call them is is congruent with just the way how life or the material the world in which we live operate so when individual can connect and define what their substance is and what are the the systems that are going to help the structures or going to align the structures what are the subs the, the substance system structures now the system then the structures that are going to be built around so that the systems can be regulated and then what are the strategies that will be implemented so that the substance systems and structure can serve their community when we put those in alignment um we go places we go places thank you Jim. yeah um peter um you had made a statement early on and uh i was to follow up on it and um, you talk about internal brand analysis. And um, as you spoke about that, it reminded me of a young lady out of NASA. And she's deep into the metaphysics, but she's a NASA scientist. And one of the things that she strike me that coincided with what you said is that very often when we are looking at self, we're seeing the physical self. And that's the that's dangerous mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we are not seeing the whole of our humanity. We are not trying to see and truly understand the spiritual side, the emotional side, uh, which is non-physical. Mm -hmm. And what she emphasizes, what really defines us in our humanity is the non-physical side, <laughs> but we don't really understand. So your program does do that deep dive into some of these concepts. And uh, I just wanted to point that out. You know, we have people today who are well accomplished academics. And um, this is not an average person that I'm talking about here because she, I believe is one of the head personalities behind going to the moon. They are now building a team, I think, to by 20, 2030, they want to be on the moon. And she's piloting and crafting that, that project. I'll get more about her and I'll talk to her later on. I'll talk more about that later on. Uh, Paul, I see Paul is smiling. I know you got something for you up your sleeve to say. Go ahead, my friend. You're closing remarks. <laughs> All right. I wasn't going to say it, but now I will. <laughs> we haven't been to the moon. We just haven't been to the moon. <laughs> okay. That's a We're going right. to have an but... intellectual debate there, right? <laughs> yeah, we haven't been to the moon or Mars. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but as far as closing remarks. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> I don't like leaving things alone. I like going there. I like going there. Okay, my friend. <laughs> But uh, closing remarks on the subject is, okay, wow, 
we're always on stage. Now that's the thing in sales. You're downtime, you're a car salesman, you're just waiting for a customer. You get a customer, now you're going on stage. You're really, you're always on stage. You know, when people approach you, if you're, whether it's life or business, you're on stage. It's how you interact with people. If you're in sales, I, giving a presentation, a sales presentation is being on stage. You're, you're the person, you're directing the information you're helping them get what they want so in sales and in life we're definitely on stage and here's two examples of people on stage and honestly being who they are off stage also because when you're on stage that's not supposed to be fake it's supposed to be real i'm not when i say on stage i'm not saying you're an actor or that a salesperson is an actor i'm not saying that at all because they're not. You're supposed to be exactly who you are 100% of the time. You're either good or bad. You either got good intentions or bad intentions. So I think here's two pretty prime examples. Dave Thomas, the My Pillow guy, versus Howard Stern. They both got platforms. They both have obviously different personalities. One talks about the good and pillows and talks about God and pillows. He's not ashamed to speak who he is and what he believes. He's not afraid. And you can't have you can't be afraid if you're presenting yourself. You can't be afraid ever. You shouldn't be. We talked about that yesterday. But uh and then you got Howard Stern. Not a godly person, kind of nasty, talks about some really nasty stuff and he he lives his life that way and when he goes on stage he acts that way. And apparently, unfortunately, there's a market for that. And uh, he presents himself to his market and they accept it. But so does the, so does the my pillow guy. We support him because of the pillows. They're comfortable. I got a couple of them, right? But I also support him because of who he is in real life. I align with him more than Howard Stern. So in business, we're going to align with the people that we, uh, that we align with in real life as well. I don't want to do business with somebody who who is, uh, I don't want to do any business financing, any real estate financing, any anything at all with somebody like Howard Stern. Even if he was the biggest name in the world and I had an opportunity to make a million dollars, I'd rather line up with somebody who lines up with my beliefs and personality. And And how do I figure out who that person is? That person brands themselves, markets themselves, and goes on stage and shows us who they are. So that's my closing comments, other than we've never been to the moon. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. All right, I, I go fight the fight today, right? <laughs> but let me say what, let me say what, I like what you said, uh, because Corey with what I said earlier. Remember I made that statement? Your personal brand is your public side that you are most comfortable with. Yeah. And um, what I've seen as I do study into personal branding, in some cases, there's exception to the rules. And just let me share some of that. You know, um, here is where you have the pastor. So, and in your statement, Paul, what you do on stage should be a reflection of you off stage but in this case the pastor on stage he is very deep into the word and he's able to articulate himself with you know the highest degree of competency but off but stage he's a pastor mm -hmm. td jakes Oh, I, I didn't call any name right <laughs> off stage he's the cussing pastor the person I was really thinking about, though, is uh, our good colleague, um, Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey. He is a comedian who is converted, uh, but he causes a lot on stage. I don't know if you do it off stage. So I'm saying as a pastor, you, are, you don't have that exception to the rule. As a pastor, whatever you say on stage should be 101% representation of who you are. And when you go against the grain of your stage present 
and it contradicts your personal present, there's where you have a contradiction. Steve Harvey is going to get away with it because he's a comedian. He's a talk show host. All right. So they're not going to hold him to that standard. They're not going to feel betrayal when they hear him cuss. But of course, with a TJ Jakes, if he cuss, he's the cussing pastor. Now that's a big headline, right? <laughs> well, he's hanging out with P. Diddy. T D Jakes okay. hanging out with P. Diddy. So that's 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 yeah, that fits the profile of what you're describing, in my opinion. Good. Well, I'm still trying to get additional information before I I bring him down and with you know with my articulation and that I'm trying, still trying to get all the facts. Uh what I want to say to TJ Jakes is that he's a strong guy because regardless of what is coming at him, I see that he is fighting back, he's pushing back. Um, there's a lot of things that he's saying that I don't really agree with. Um, but what I must say is that I like his spirit. He's fighting back. Now, coming back to the topic, um, my last words um, for today is how to humanize your corporate brand. And there's four things that I want to say here today in conclusion. It's important to create a nurturing environment that enables the workforce to self-actualize. In today's work environment, we the focus is not self-actualization. The focus is performance and cash flow optimization. The second concept that I want to say is that you need to create a nurturing environment that enables the client to feel overcompensated of course the client is where you're going to get cash flow optimization from so you want to ensure that your corporate culture is so designed to achieve that desired outcome <clears throat> the third is to create a nurturing environment that influence and inspire the public in the public domain you're going to have influencers that can influence positive public response towards your your brand so what does your corporate brand say is about influencing those influencers <clears throat> and the last point here is to create a nurtured environment that optimize the business cash flow potential of course we're talking business here and you want to ask yourself, what does their corporate culture, what does the environment look like in terms of optimizing the business cash flow? In this context, we are not talking about, you know, having your savings in a 0.1% interest bearing account. We are talking about you understanding things like debt mitigation, how to reduce your debt life cycle, how to reduce the cost of capital, how to leverage your excess liquidity into income producing asset, safe mm -hmm. investment portfolio. So that's a big language. And there's a lot for us to talk about there. As I said today, today we're doing some high level overview in terms of what is, <clears throat> what is personal brand and what is corporate brand. So there is, we are just dealing with the crumbs today. <laughs> we're just dealing with the surface. We're gonna deal with the whole cake um, later on. Uh, Paul, in conclusion, can I just ask you to quickly talk to us about some of the financial instruments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me start off that subject by saying, call us. We're ready to work with you. We're ready to get it done for you. So what, whatever you need right now, don't wait anymore. If there's difficult credit and you think that's standing in your way, it's not. Let us help you get that problem solved. Uh, if you need equipment for your business, don't wait don't go to the bank because they don't love you like we love you and they're not going to do it for you like we're going to do it for you so we have equipment financing commercial and investment property financing cash flow products for your business cash flow slow we're going to make it go purchase order financing or if you need to raise capital for large projects existing businesses or startups with securities and exchange commission compliant capital raises we've got you covered there every aspect of financing for business that you need we are a one-stop shop and we're going to do it the best way that it can be done you will get the best outcome with us paul at patriot b 
bfc.com. Email me, direct message Gary. Do it both of us so we can both work together with you on this. Let's set up an appointment. Let's let's get to the bottom of what can get accomplished for you. All right, thanks for that share, um, Paul. And there you had it, the audience. I, again, I want to thank you for viewing this program. I want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share so you will be the first to get these content that we bring to you on a regular basis. And um, it has been such a pleasure being with you um, today. Paul and Peter, we're always great working with you guys. And do have a wonderful day in front of you.